Hi, this is Rochelle with Live in Vibrancy, and today I'm going to talk about why a lack of boundaries could be keeping you from creating a new reality with the people in your life. So a lot of people mentally imagine someone differently or affirm that they're different to get a result, and for some of those people, they find that it just isn't making a difference. It isn't manifesting something different. So um, it's an easy mistake to make because even I used to think that it was just my thoughts that made the difference. Um, but then I would wonder why some things were manifesting and others weren't. Uh, and part of the problem is that so many people believe that we create only at the level of conscious thought um, that it's become a really common message. Um, and it when you are unconsciously competent, meaning you're um, in energetic alignment with what you're creating, it definitely does seem that you create the level of conscious thought. Um, and that means you have no resistance to what you're manifesting. Um, and because when we're in that higher vibrational energy, we can manifest very easily. Um, but even if you're in a high vibration about one thing and a lower vibration, um, meaning not just your emotions, but your beliefs um, and your subconscious set points about what it is that you're manifesting, you might find um, that it's stuck or you're not seeing the movement you want to see. And so I also know that the idea that um, thoughts are enough or that thoughts sorry, are not enough <laughs> might also seem to contradict with what Neville says when he speaks about imagining lovingly on behalf of someone else um, for them to show up differently. Um, but imagining is what allows you to go beyond what the conscious um, mind, which is your most limited mind, thinks is true. And so that means seeing and responding to someone in a way that goes beyond what you think is true. And while many focus on Neville's instructions to imagine, because he speaks of imagination at length, the key instruction in his work is um, not imagining. It's actually the adjective lovingly. He's telling you the quality of imagining to assume. Because you can imagine without feeling, or you can imagine something and still be out of energetic alignment with having it. Um, and that's when we're creating by pushing energy. Um, and that's what leaves you feeling really exhausted because the amount of emotional resistance that you're moving against is like pushing a boulder uphill. So to quote Leslie Hubbard, it doesn't matter what your mind thinks. It matters what your body believes. Your body is telling you your true assumption. And this is because your body is um, essentially a lot of your subconscious mind is your body and it definitely speaks the language of the subconscious and the key of being vibrationally aligned is so important to manifesting that neville even titled a book after it feeling is the secret <laughs> because you don't manifest what you want you manifest what you are it's the law of correspondence and the law of correspondence reminds us that the outer world is a reflection of the contents of our inner world uh, this law is about imagining and acting from the manifestation and not imagining about the manifestation. And if you're imagining someone in a positive way but are still emotionally interacting with them in a way that's aligned to fear or loss or resentment or any of the other low uh, energies um, that are uh, aligned to your unwanted reality, then you're actually imagining for them um, in, in the same way that you're getting them. And so then you have to ask yourself, am I actually imagining for them in a loving new way? Or even a new way, period. If I'm constantly um, thinking of them one way, but literally assuming them to be another. And so this is where boundaries come in. Because you be, do, have. So you have to be it first and then do it from the place of being in order to have it. And so boundaries are not about telling someone else that they need to be different. There's no one to change but self. Boundaries are about showing the universe who you are. That who you are is different than who you've been. They are about, um, they are something that you do to show up for yourself as the person who is living from your manifestation. Your reality is created by what you believe is possible. So when you uh, resist setting a boundary 
or you're not willing to set a boundary because you're afraid that you'll lose someone, then I want you to ask yourself honestly, do I really see them in this new and positive way that's aligned to experiencing a new reality with them? Or do I just imagine them in the new way until that's challenged and then I revert to seeing and feeling and responding to them in the old way? That fear is something uh, to experience and process through so that you can let it go and that you can move into alignment with that new way of seeing someone because the universe is a mirror. Everyone is you pushed out and when you don't respect your own wants and needs, your time, your energy, whatever it is, the people in your life will reflect that back to you by not respecting your wants and needs, your time, your energy, or whatever it is. And that person, that other person, shows up the way that you believe they are because the assumption that you have about them creates them that way in your life. People don't show you who they are. They show you who you believe they are. And they show you who you believe you are. Your brain doesn't match your beliefs to fit your life. Your brain matches your life to fit your beliefs, to quote James Wedmore. <laughs> so what you see is a reflection of what you truly believe. And I stole that from him because it was pretty brilliant and true. And all of that is uh, what you truly believe. It's all malleable and changeable. Um, but you don't do it at the level of the conscious mind because that is your most limited mind. It fits in a, in a box that you can't see. And so manifesting is not about ignoring or steamrolling or suppressing your internal experience so that you don't react. Um, because if you have to abandon yourself to manifest something, you'll have to continue to abandon yourself in order to keep it. So manifesting is about maintaining the vibration of being the person who has it also known as making an assumption and holding that faithfully before it manifests on the physical plane. So I want you to just take a moment with me. And I want you to really take a deep breath and just get really present in your body. Some of you might take a little, another moment. Um, some of you might already be there. Now I want you to put yourself in a moment of having what it is that you're creating. The version of you that has it doesn't think, feel, or act from the same limitations as the version of you that doesn't have it. So when you're there and you're in that moment, I want you to really align to what it's like to have it and how that's different from when you don't have it. And so if your eyes aren't closed, just take a minute and close your eyes and just take another deep breath. And I want you to just let that image of what you have just sort of fade away. And now I want you to take a minute and just breathe in that feeling that you are connected to everything. And some of you might need to do this more than one time to really get there, especially if you're really identified in your body. But the idea of being really identified in your physical being, in the being that you believe that you are, which is limited, is often one of the biggest barriers. And so I want you to just take another deep breath in and notice, if you can, that stillness within you. And if you can't this time, that's okay. You can come back to this and do this again. And just really invite in that feeling of connection to everything. And just notice where your awareness is. And begin to expand your awareness outside of yourself. Just really noticing the walls around you as if you're touching all of them, all at once. And connecting to the building that you're in, just merge with the building. And begin to experience everything from its perspective. And 
And some of you may have never worked with your awareness this way, and some of you may have lots of practice. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Just be okay with that. Just continue to work to expand your awareness beyond the building. Connecting with everything as you pass over and through it. Just expanding beyond the land around whatever building you're in. And expanding past the town or the city or whatever area that you're in. Expand until you're beyond the country that you're in. And just really experiencing as much of it all at once as you can. And this might feel like a stretch, and that's okay. And just, and if you can, expand across the entire world. Just inviting in what you think that might be like. And then inviting in what it is like. As much as you can experience. And when you start to experience yourself as connected to source, And everything that is, just take another deep breath in, continuing to expand. And just inviting in everything. Just hold that perspective as yourself, connected to the all. I want you to bring into your mind whatever barrier it is you feel like you're facing to create what you want. Still holding that perspective of being connected to the all. I want you to notice how different it feels when you observe your barrier from such an expansive place. And I'd really love to hear in the comments what your experience of that was, if it changed anything from you, for you. And you can let that go whenever you're ready, or you can stay there if that's what's right for you. But I wanted to use that exercise to demonstrate that how you experience something really makes a difference. And when you shift at the level of your identity, your relationship with the people around you naturally adjusts as a result. And that often when we are when we are afraid to expand, it is because we have identified with a limitation of some sort. Sometimes that limitation is um, because we're really identified with our bodies. And um, often when um, we have a lot of emotional triggers, uh, the body literally takes over. And so that's why we do that releasing work and um, like the letting go, because it allows your energetic field to expand. And as your energetic field expands, you are able to move outside of your perceived limitations. So I want you to ask yourself, what beliefs about you or about others or about the world are creating the reality you're experiencing now, what your life looks like now? And then ask yourself what shifts you can make to become this more expansive version of yourself. So in my next video, I want to talk a little bit more about what setting boundaries looks like. Because setting boundaries to support a shift at the level of your identity is intentional.
It does not look like a reactionary response to something someone does that you don't like because you want them to be different. Because the reality is, is you have to be different first. And so I'm going to dive a little deeper into this, um, not only uh, to help describe what setting boundaries looks like, but also the kinds of things that you can expect when you set boundaries. All right, uh, so until then, uh, if this was helpful, please share, like, and subscribe. And if not, that's okay too. <laughs> uh, so until I see you next time, uh, live like you can't fail. <laughs>